It's finally here. After over a year of anticipation and drooling over the tech demos, ooing and aahing over the reported specs and capabilities of the console, the somewhat controversial unveiling of the system's final design, DVD movie playback, backwards compatibility to original PlayStation games and prohibitals, and all the hype and excitement surrounding the system and what it offers, one still can't help but feel as if they are on the precipice of history, as Sony is about to release the PlayStation 2 here in North America. Already in the hands of Japanese gamers for over seven months now, it is finally North America's turn to take part in the biggest video game console launch in history. That's right, it's a new millennium and the PS2 is leading the charge. Sony has put all their cards on the table and is about to release the most powerful gaming console in history. History is literally f unfolding before our eyes, and it's gamers who will reap the rewards. Sony has come off at the risk of sounding arrogant, naming the custom-built processor in the system the Emotion Engine. The idea being that developers will be able to transcend merely playing a game, and gamers will now be able to laugh cry, and feel true emotions along with their in-game characters. Worlds will be vibrant, and the characters, thanks to the power of the system, will now be able to express and show true emotion, bringing in a new form of immersion to gaming that has never been experienced before. All that said, abstract thoughts about immersion aside, and dreams of the PS2 being an entertainment hub in your living rooms through things like DVD playback, the real question on a true hardcore gamer's mind is a simple one. Are the games any good? We at 3.5D Gaming have the scoop on all of the North American launch games, the ones you need to buy, rent, or avoid should you be lucky enough to get your hands on a PS2 this October the 26th. That's right, stay tuned for the reviews of all 29 launch games, as well as previews for the hottest new PS2 games coming up on the horizon. Welcome to 3.5D Gaming's Ultimate PlayStation 2 Launch Guide. No Gran Turismo at launch? No problem. Age of Tech is gracing gamers with the Gran Turismo of Met Games in Armored Core 2. Technically the fourth actual game in the series, AC2 allows gamers to build their own custom mechs to take out on 30 new varied missions, or to take on opponent mechs in the arena battles. Once you get past the steep learning curve in the controls, you'll find beautiful eye-popping graphics and particle effects and a richly deep experience in the customization. If you're a fan of the series, this is a must-have launch title. However, if you're not a hardcore gearhead, you should probably rent it first. Watch out, Tekken. There's a new contender in town for the PlayStation fighting game Crown. Already in the hands of Dreamcast gamers, Dead or Alive 2 might just be the best fighting game released at launch. Featuring voluptuous, bouncing beauties, a deep fighting system with easy counters, and multi-tiered environments with environmental hazards, which make Tekkens look flat and uninteresting by comparison, and beautiful graphics, Dead or Alive has it all. Unless you're a hardcore Tekken fanboy, Dead or Alive is the fighting game Knucklehead should pick up at launch. Shedding the one-on-one -on -one fighting system of the original, 
Dynasty Warriors 2 takes Koei's Romance of the Three Kingdoms strategy games into the world of a giant open-ended beat-em-up, Streets of Rage style. The poly-pushing power of the PS2 ensures that you have never seen so many enemies on screen at one time. Koei really did recreate the feeling of a big open battle. The general graphics do seem a bit blander, with even some poppin' in the backgrounds and enemies, but the grand scale of the game makes up for it. The beat-em-up gameplay does get a bit repetitive, but the added experience points does give the game an almost hack-and-slash RPG feel. This game is really fun, but definitely repetitive. If you're a fan of the repetitive nature of beat-em-ups, pick this game up at launch you definitely won't be disappointed. The rest of us should be satisfied with a weekend rental. With the 2000 Sydney Olympics just concluding, it seems there's always a couple of track and field games released to coincide with the Olympic Games. While track and field games are nothing new, I truly doubt this will be anyone's first pick amidst the PS2 launch lineup. While a very solid game as track and field games go, Replete with all kinds of carpal tunnel causing mini games disguised as the events, its short length won't hold the average gamer. However, the true appeal here is playing with your friends, and this game is definitely good for a weekend rental for hours of friendly competition with a couple of buddies. If you are one of the two simulation snowboarding fans out there, this game will be right up your alley. With 15 professional riders, a steep learning curve in the controls, 2-player head-to-head support, and all the typical modes you would expect in the average snowboarding game, this game has a lot to offer. Konami also added a new mode where players can create their own snowboarders and work their way up to the X Games. This game does offer a lot to the sim gamer, and the snowboarder mode can be quite addictive. But, we at 3.5D Gaming predict that most gamers are going to go with EA's more accessible SSX instead. If you're not a hardcore snowboarding fan, this game has pure rental material written all over it. Early PlayStation adopters might be familiar with King's Field, which is a snail-paced dungeon crawl in the vein of Ultima Underworld. Eternal Ring comes to us from From Software, who also developed King's Field. And like King's Field, there are likely to be two camps when it comes to this game. The first camp is a small handful of King's Field fans who will be wonderfully immersed in this game's gameplay, graphics, and environments. The second, no doubt, will be the majority of gamers who will find this game to be slow, plodding, and a chore of a game to play. Kingsfield fans will enjoy Eternal Ring, but for everyone else, rent it to see if it's your cup of tea. At the very least, you'll enjoy the beautiful graphics provided in the game. Speaking of Kingsfield, From Software is also gracing us with Evergrace, which plays similar to Kingsfield, were it a third-person action RPG. The combat system is similar to Kingsfield, but the game takes advantage of the PS2's analog face buttons, where the intensity of a strike depends on how hard you press the button. There are also two characters you can swap to at any time to play their storyline, instead of having to play through the game as one and then the other. The game's biggest claim to fame is the fact that the outfits you choose to wear throughout the game actually show up on your character during gameplay. The graphics are a bit rough in some areas, as this game started development on the PlayStation 1, and then was shifted to the PS2 along the way. This is a solid action RPG that will appeal to more gamers than Eternal Ring, and should be the next RPG you play after Summoner. Fantavision is one of the most fun tech demos you'll ever play. While technically it is a puzzle game where you string together color combinations of fireworks into a satisfying big explosion, the game is really just a very pretty way for Sony to show off the system's much heralded particle effects capabilities. Taken on its own, the game is too short to be anything more than a rental, even with its added two-player mode for the North American launch. Fun game, but it's way too short. If Armored Core 2 is too sim-heavy for you, Gun Griffin Blaze takes the arcade route, 
allowing you to jump into a giant mech and blow stuff up to your heart's desire. Gone are the worries about your mech loadout, and all you have to worry about is completing the objectives and blowing stuff up nicely. The Gun Griffin series actually has its roots on the Sega Saturn, of all things, but moves quite nicely to Sony's new console. As a well-made mech game with a good variety to its missions, and better controls than Armored Core 2, Gun Griffin will satisfy action and mech fans with a weekend rental. Look for that shiny box that says Working Designs on it. Following true events in Japanese history, hardcore strategy nuts will lose hours to Kessen. While it is more accessible than Koei's Romance of the Three Kingdoms series, there is still a ton of deep strategy to be had here. Kessen features epic battles, beautiful eye-popping next-gen graphics, and engrossing strategy gameplay that will appeal to patient gamers. Strategy fans, put this in your collection. Action gamers, move on. And everyone in between, give this a rental to see if it suits your tastes. Don't adjust your eyes here. Believe it or not, you're not watching an actual football game on TV. You're watching the raw power of the PlayStation 2 on display. The graphics in this game are mind-blowing. The graphical polish and player animations are surreal. The tackles look real, and the players move so lifelike you'll be hard-pressed to notice that this isn't a real broadcast. Players are beefy and move in a lifelike manner. Details from the reflection of the stadium lights off helmets, to bumps on the ball, to even the bottom of players' shoes show how the extra power of the PS2 can allow EA to focus on polishing even the smallest visual details of the game. If you want to know what all the hype about these systems' graphical capabilities are, we give you Madden 2001. Without exaggeration, this is the greatest Madden game we've ever seen. Going beyond pure visuals, Madden has the same polished sim gameplay the series is known for, but the new momentum-based control scheme will take some getting used to. It has all the extra modes the series is known for, franchise, create a player, the Madden challenge, and etc. However, it adds a new Madden card system, where completing challenges in the game unlocks cards that can be used to purchase unlockables in the game. This means that not only is this the best Madden ever in graphics and gameplay, but all the extra unlockables means hardcore pigskin fans will put RPG levels of hours into this one. To sum up the hype of the PS2 launch with one game, it's Madden 2001. Rockstar Games is making a strong showing for the PS2's launch with games like Midnight Club. For PC gamers, you might remember last year's Midtown Madness. Angel Studios, the same developer, has essentially brought the formula from Midtown Madness to Sony's 128-bit gaming machine. For those not familiar with Midtown Madness, think the racing portions of Driver, where the player is forced to race in an expansive, living, breathing city, avoiding traffic, pedestrians, and running from the police, all while hitting checkpoints before their rivals do. The gameplay is fun but can be frustratingly challenging, the controls and physics are solid, and the graphics, while not the most detailed of the launch crop, still have an impressive scale, with so much going on on screen. If you're looking for a non-traditional racer that will keep you coming back no matter how many times you fail, Midnight Club is at least worth renting. Plus, as huge fans of Driver, Midnight Club shows off the system's capability and makes us even more excited for what reflections we'll be able to produce come Driver 3. MotoGP treads the line between arcade and simulation racing and combines them with beautiful graphics. Pure sim enthusiasts can turn on the sim mode for a more realistic experience, while more novice players can turn the handling to arcade. The game offers a season mode where you can work your way up, two player mode, and even a challenge mode where you can complete up to 50 challenges. The only drawback to the game is the mere five tracks it offers, which hampers replay value. However, sim racing fans, Pick this game up for that Gran Turismo fill. You won't be disappointed. Everyone else will be satisfied with their rental. What's that you say? You actually like hockey better than you do football? Well, it's a good thing that EA didn't forget hockey fans for the PS2 launch. 
FIFA fans might still have to wait a bit, but NHL 2001 is here for launch, and EA has given it the same treatment as Madden, making this the best looking hockey game ever released. Beyond graphics, the game has a plethora of modes and tweaking options. Though it's missing the franchise and challenge modes of Madden, there is still enough to keep hockey fans satisfied for months, especially if you spring for the PS2 multi-tap. Though it's still missing some of the passing options of its predecessors, and the difficulty comes off as a little easy, even on hard. This is still a must-buy for hockey fans. Based off of the Japanese manga of the same name, Orphan is a unique mixture of action RPG and turn-based RPG. The game shifts between the action RPG mechanics to real-time turn-based battles. Instead of choosing a command from the menu, all attacks are assigned to a button on the DualShock 2, and players can attack or defend in real-time at the press of a button. Orphan takes a unique spin on the RPG formula and gets points for trying something new. However, the overall game comes off as not bad in any way, but also not great in any way. It's simply just middle of the road. This is a rental at best. Even with the advanced processing power and physics of the PS2, Cue Ball is still just a pool game and a decent one at that. You can play 8-ball, 9-ball, and even offer some challenge modes. However, you'll have more fun dropping some quarters in at your local pool hall than you will with this game. Not a bad game, but even as video pool games go, it's average at best, and a rental at the very best. The original Ready to Rumble made it to shelves in time for last year's superb Dreamcast launch, and Round 2 has made it in time for the PS2 launch. Taking the midway approach to sports, this game is all about cartoony, over-the-top arcade action, making it more approachable to hardcore and casual gamers alike. Players build up their rumble meters in a match in order to unleash a bombardment of attacks on their opponents without losing stamina. On top of head-to-head -head and exhibition, the game features tons of unlockable characters like Michael Jackson and Shaq. And uh, even the President of the United States of America. There is also a championship mode where players take on weekly regiments of fights and training in order to build up their stats. The training modes are done through mini-games. This is a great Pick up for fans of the original, and a great rental for anyone looking for some simple arcade boxing fun. Now what would a PlayStation system launch be without a brand new Ridge Racer game to go along with it? And a beautiful one at that. Everything about this game is smooth, from the controls, the buttery smooth frame rate, and the eye-popping graphics, featuring details right down to reflecting the backgrounds off the back windshield of the cars. Even with the anti-aliasing and shimmering visual glitches that have plagued early PS2 games, this is possibly the best looking racing game of all time. At least until Gran Turismo 3 hits, that is. Ridge Racer 5 takes this series back to its roots, bringing back the single branching track designs of the original, as opposed to R4's varied selection of tracks. And also there are only 14 cars to unlock, as opposed to the 300 plus in Ridge Racer 4. For those who aren't familiar with the Ridge Racer series, this series is known for its pure, unadulterated arcade racing with power slide heavy gameplay. Sim fans will scoff at this game, but this series has always chosen playability over simulation, and PS2 owners looking for the best car-based racing game to play at launch need to put this in their collection. Beautiful graphics, smooth gameplay, tight controls, great soundtrack, and an abundance of cars and race modes to unlock. Namco has shown up big for the PS2 launch with Ridge Racer 5. The original arcade cabinet for Silent Scope comes equipped with a really cool sniper rifle light gun, which allows players to look through the scope to take out the enemies. Unfortunately, the PS2 version does not come with a rifle controller. In fact, as of yet, no light guns have been released for the system. Playing this game with a controller sort of kills the novelty of the arcade original. 
That being said, this is a fun arcade shooter that quickly wears thin. Even Silent Scope's putting the USB port on the front of your shiny new console to use with full USB mouse support can't make up for the lack of a rifle, and certainly can't lip this game beyond pure rental only territory. Smuggler's Run is a rip-roaring, seat-of-your-pants, mission-based driving game that has players driving across massive landscapes to complete a variety of illegal missions. Imagine Driver, except not in a city, but in sprawling landscapes, and you're not the good guy. Smugglers throws a good variety of missions your way, from capture the flag against competitors, pick up and drop off missions, to even straight races. Smugglers has enough variety and extra modes to keep you playing. Like Driver, some of the missions in the game are hair-pullingly, frustratingly difficult, but you always find yourself giving even the hardest missions in the game just one more try. The size and scope of the levels are massive, and the maps are filled with hair-raising jumps and even populated with pedestrians and wildlife. Unlike Midnight Club, Smugglers has no qualms about running them over either, Grand Theft Auto style. The gameplay is high-strung, there are three large environments to explore and do missions in, and the gameplay is challenging yet addictive. The controls take a bit of getting used to, and the physics are a little bouncy, and it's easy to get overturned. Graphically, the detail isn't the best looking of the launch crop, but the size of the maps makes up for it. Overall, if you're a big fan of Driver, pick this game up. Otherwise, this is definitely at least a must rent for everyone else. This is going to sound a little strange, but if after you drop $299 on your shiny new console, and $34 on the required memory card, you find that you only have enough money in the bank for just one of the 29 launch games available. Plop your money down on Snowboard Supercross. This needs to be in every PS2 gamer's collection. SSX is more than just a mere snowboarding game most of which just give you a bunch of random modes and focus on either tricks or racing. But none of them combine tricks and racing in the way SSX does. In SSX, doing tricks builds your boost meter, which allows players to boost their speed throughout the racing. The game forces you to tread the line between doing some sick tricks, which are all easy to pull off, or focusing on the race at hand. Do you try to pull off some of those sick tricks to get some more boost? Or do you skip the tricks to pull ahead of your competitors? The reward gives you boost, but the risk is potentially not landing the trick, eating it, and losing position. This game combines racing and tricks like no other snowboarding game before. Tricks aren't just a means to get some arbitrary score while racing, they are an essential part of winning the race. And winning all three runs per track gains you experience points that you can use to level up your character's stats. The tracks themselves steal the show, as possibly the most intricately designed tracks in any racing game ever made. The power of the new console has opened up the door for each track to be its own open world filled with hidden paths and shortcuts. While Ridge Racer 5 uses different variations of the same track for each of its different tracks, you'll swear there are at least five or six different variations of each track in SSX, all hidden within the same track. While games like Cool Borders, for example, would occasionally have some branching paths, hampered by the PS1's hardware limitations, they often kept the edges of the track obvious with an invisible barrier, always keeping you on the main track. In SSX, there are no barriers. Oftentimes in this game, you'll swear you're going off the track to an area where you're not supposed to be, only to find out that it actually leads to a secret shortcut that was put in there by design. The added power of the PS2 has opened the doors for EA Canada to add so many secret areas and new areas in each track that you'll be finding new areas for months, if not years, to come. The sheer size, scope, and attention to detail means these tracks are like none you have ever experienced before. This is what the next generation is all about. If you aren't sure why you needed to upgrade to the PS2 from the PS1, 
SSX is not only the best game at launch, the best snowboarding game ever, and easily one of the best games this year for any console. It is also one of the few actual true next generational offerings in the PS2 launch lineup. Most of the games on this list are just prettier PS1 games, meaning that from a gameplay and design standpoint, they've all been done before and could be reproduced on all last gen consoles. SSX, along with a couple of others in the lineup, is a true next generation game that size and scope could not be reproduced on the PS1, Saturn, or N64 in any playable form. Until Metal Gear Solid 2, Final Fantasy X, and Gran Turismo 3 hit the shelves, this is the best reason to own a PS2, at least for the time being. EX3 is definitely the third string contender for the PS2 fighting crown, and should only be looked at by hardcore Street Fighter fans or fighting game fans who've already mashed their way through Tekken Tag and Dead or Alive 2. EX3 improves over the Japanese game by eradicating most of the slowdown that plagued the Japanese launch version, and it does have some unlockable characters and even a cool character edit mode where you can earn experience points and special attacks by beating challenges. Not in itself a bad mode, but the overall package is something that will only appeal to Street Fighter fans, and specifically Street Fighter EX fans. Street Fighter will always play the best in 2D, but EX3 is worth a look, but not worth a buy to most gamers. Summoner is hands down the best RPG to play on your shiny new console. All the RPG offerings so far are a bit of a mixed bag, and none of them are traditional. Luckily for Final Fantasy fans who get their hands on the new console, backwards compatibility to PS1 games means that they won't have to miss out on the soon-to-be-released Final Fantasy IX. However, if you plop down the money for a PS2 and want to play the best next-gen offering at the moment, pick up Summoner. Summoner puts you in the role of Joseph, a summoner with a storied past, who wakes up to find his village on fire. And so the game begins. Summoner plays like a PC RPG. The battles are a mixture of real-time with some menu commands to do things like control your cohorts, cast spells, and even summon monsters. There is a chain system that allows players to chain attacks, think Vagrant Story, and a leveling up system that allows the players to add stat points in order to customize their character to their liking. As the game moves on, Joseph gets the ability to summon creatures, and three new members are added to your party. You can only control one player at a time in combat, but the rest can be controlled via a mid-fight menu. Cities in the game are massive in scope. You can get lost for days just wandering around, taking in the sights, talking to NPCs will not only gain you much needed information, but a myriad of side quests. You can ignore these quests or choose to play them to gain new items. The size and scope and extra gameplay options in this game are beyond impressive. There are even random battles on the world map which put you in large environments full of enemies. Enemies. Overall, despite some first-gen graphical issues, some major pop-in issues, slowdown, and even some weird character models and under-detailed textures in some spots, Summoner is the best RPG available on the PS2 at launch. Final Fantasy fans might be disappointed, but PC RPG fans will be pulled into Summoner's deep storyline and varied gameplay. Everyone else should rent it to see, and traditional RPG fans should just pick up Final Fantasy IX when it hits this November instead. If you're a fan of Hot Shots Golf, Swing Away Golf will be right up your alley. Going for a more accessible game of golf, Swing Away aims to appeal at a wider market who find the idea of playing simulation golf as appealing as watching paint dry. Like Hot Shots Golf, Swing Away manages to package deep enough simulation aspects into a very playable, fun golf game that is packed full of extra modes, including a course editor. With added features and some 
decent next-gen graphics, it still doesn't quite top Hot Shots, but hardcore golf fans and gamers looking for an addictive way to spend a weekend rental should look into Swing Away Golf. Last year, Namco wowed Dreamcast gamers by porting Soul Calibur to the system with brand new graphics, amazing gameplay, and tons of unlockables, making for arguably the greatest 3D fighting game ever made. Namco is giving Tekken the same treatment by releasing Tekken Tag Tournament for the PS2's launch but with mixed results. The graphics are amazing and beautiful. You've never seen Tekken or possibly any other fighting game look so good. The new tag feature works well and has even worked into tag team combos and the roster plays like a greatest hits version, a who's who of Tekken characters, combining most of the roster of all three games into one super Tekken. Without a doubt, this is the greatest Tekken game of all time. That being said, beautiful graphics aside, for Tekken fans, this is retreading old ground. If you played Tekken 3 to death, there is very little here to warrant a purchase. While Soul Calibur's gameplay was a breath of fresh air and added the incredible Edge Master mode to earn new unlockables in the game, Tekken Tag's only special mode, outside of the standard modes you'd expect, is a very well-made Tekken Bowl, which is fun, but not a replacement for something as in-depth as the Edge Master mode in Soul Calibur. If you're already bored with Tekken 3, Tag won't bring enough to the table to bring you back. Its graphics are beautiful, but the backgrounds are still the same flat, pseudo 3D, endless scrolling backgrounds the series has had from the start. By comparison, DOA 2's backgrounds feel light years ahead with fully 3D gameplay and backgrounds. If you want to play something fresh that feels truly next generation, go with DOA 2 over Tekken Tag. Tag is a great Tekken game, the best one ever made to be sure but doesn't feel like the truly next-gen Tekken game we all wanted to see on the PS2. Meaning, it takes second place, right behind Dead or Alive 2. Free Radical Design is making their design debut for the PS2 launch with Time Splitters, aptly named Time Splitters due to the incredible speed the game runs at. For GoldenEye fans, Time Splitters should look, play, and even sound familiar that's because Free Radical Design is composed of original members of the GoldenEye Perfect Dark team, and that heritage shows through in both the single player, multiplayer, and overall feel of the game. The only big gripe that can be levied about the game is how basic the single player missions are. This was a game rushed for launch, as the single player missions amount to a simple game of Capture the Flag and the visuals aren't exactly a giant leap forward from even the N64. Players start at the beginning of each map, hunt down a simple artifact, and then run to the exit as the time splitters show up to stop them. The AI is well programmed, especially on harder difficulty levels. The single player levels show promise in the case of a sequel, but one can tell that the devs spent most of their time on the multiplayer aspect of the game and that's where this game really shines. Not only is there an incredibly in-depth map editor in the game that will keep you designing and tweaking your homemade maps for hours, the sheer mayhem of the multiplayer will keep you coming back for more. Not only is this game the best reason to pick up a PS2 multi-tap at launch to play with up to four people, and up to 14 bots can join in on the action, so even if you are short a person or two, you'll still be able to kill hours, blasting away at deathmatch, team deathmatch, capture the bag, bag tag, and more. The multiplayer is the most fun you can have in console first person multiplayer, even by yourself. Despite the paltry single player, Time Splitters is a must buy launch game for GoldenEye fans and a must rent, must play for all PS2 gamers. Just pick this game up. 1999's PC Game of the Year is making a huge splash on consoles, seeing release on both the Dreamcast and the PS2 at launch. Unreal Tournament 
ditches the single-player campaign to focus on what's truly important. Uh, it's the multiplayer, stupid. The poly counts in the PS2's character models get a boost, looking better than even the PC version's character models, and the gameplay is fast and mostly smooth. The game generally hovers around 30 frames per second, but there is some noticeable slowdown in certain levels, especially the larger ones. But it is especially noticeable when using the mouse to aim. That's right, not to ignore the hardware features of the PS2, Epic has added full keyboard and mouse support for Unreal Tournament, which can even be used in the four-player split-screen matches if you have a USB hub to use. The biggest downer with the PS2 version is beyond Epic's control, whereas Dreamcast owners can enjoy this game up to eight players online via SegaNet, Sony's network plans are still yet to come. However, not to be defeated by lack of online play, Epic has included System Link Play through the Firewire port on the front of the PS2 to create what's called a local area network. Those rich enough to own four PS2 systems, four copies of Unreal Tournament, four TVs, and a Firewire port hub can link them together for a full screen, four player frag fest. Overall, while Unreal Tournament is an excellent launch offering, coming with 51 maps, mutators, and up to four player split screen, frame rate issues bog the game down just a little. Given the choice of which one to get, buy time splitters and rent Unreal Tournament. Ever play a racing game where the wonky physics ruin the whole experience? Wild Wild Racing is a mediocre offering at best due to some poor design choices on the side of Rage Software. While the challenge modes the game offers can be pretty fun, the game's only saving grace actually. The wonky physics and flawless AI opponents quickly turn the racing elements into a practice in frustration. The most aggravating part of the controls has to do with what happens when your buggy even so much as taps a wall in the game. Instead of bouncing off the wall and continuing on, your cart will instead be pulled into face the wall, thus stopping all forward motion and leaving you stranded there until you reverse away from the wall and correct your course. This problem shows up so much that half of the races you'll be going in reverse as much as you'll be going forward. The challenge modes are the highlight, but overall, this is only rent if you have absolutely nothing else to play. There aren't even any pretty graphics to look at here. X-Squad is a squad-based shooter developed in partnership by Square EA, and while it has an innovative gun upgrade system, the rest of the game is standard fare. The squad-based elements are interesting, but underdeveloped, and the missions lack any real variety. The controls are well done mimicking first person shooters like time splitters, but overall the gameplay is a little basic. Some of the graphics are nice to look at, but the game's short length make it pure rental material. If you've played any of the Siphon Filter games, you've already played better than X-Squad. But for a weekend rental, this game is worth a playthrough. The preview version of NFL Game Day is still early from what we can tell. The graphics and animations aren't up to snuff, and the whole game is very glitchy. If 989 can iron out the many rough edges before the game is released, this could be the restart of the old Madden vs. Game Day feud. Rayman 2 has been ported to every available platform under the sun. Now it's the PS2's turn to get an upgraded version of the game with new graphics and some new refinements to the formula. 3D platformer game fans are in for a real treat when this game hits this upcoming January. Koei is porting their above average action game Winback Covert Operations to the PS2 from the N64. On top of updated graphics, they're adding several new multiplayer modes to go along with it. The solid gameplay should tide PS2 action gamers over, at least until more high profile games start to hit the system. Oni is an anime inspired third person shooter from Bungie Software, best known for the Myth series on the PC. 
the art style of the game feels like you are playing a real Japanese anime movie. If the gameplay matches the quality of the art style, PS2 gamers will have another great action game to immerse themselves into this January. 3.5D Gaming has managed to get their hands on footage of the Red Faction demo that THQ was showing behind closed doors at E3. And man, are we excited for this game. Coming from Volition, the devs behind Summoner, Red Faction's main claim to fame is its revolutionary Geomod engine, standing for Geometric Modification. What this translates to is environments in the game, like pillars and walls, can be blown up and are deformed in real time. Things like walls and locked doors are literally no longer a hindrance, as the player can now just blow holes around them. This is one of our most anticipated upcoming PS2 games. The original Soul Reaver hit the PlayStation last year and quickly became one of our favorite dark action adventure games of all time. A huge world to explore with a very dark color palette and art direction. The game was moody and brilliant. Soul Reaver 2 has us drooling in anticipation to find out what happens after that stupid cliffhanger ending in the original Soul Reaver. Is this Sony Zelda killer in the making? Probably not, but Dark Cloud mixes elements of Zelda with elements of a really old Super Nintendo game called ActRaiser, where players find items in the game that allow them to build the town around them. So it's a mixture of Zelda with world building elements. Mix that with beautiful graphics and you have one of the most hotly anticipated PS2 games coming your way. Think Resident Evil with Samurai, and you only have part of an idea of what Onomusha offers. PS1 gamers might be familiar with Soul of the Samurai, and Onomusha plays similar. While there are horror elements to the game, this is primarily an action game, but with the same controls as Resident Evil and the same pre-rendered backgrounds. Capcom started developing this game on the original PlayStation, but moving it to the PS2 means that Onomusha is slated to be the system's first high-profile killer app. Coming from the same developers as the Tobol series on the PlayStation, the bouncer showcases amazing graphics and is said to have incredible interactivity with objects in the environment. With a good story focus and character designs that look like they were ripped straight out of Final Fantasy VIII, The Bouncer is one of the most hotly anticipated PS2 games on the horizon. We can't wait to get our hands on this one. Twisted Metal is back in black with Twisted Metal Black, and looking to revitalize the faltering franchise for the next generation with a much darker art direction and a new development house made up of original team members from the original Twisted Metal team. We can't wait to get our hands on this game. The previously hugely anticipated Gran Turismo 2000 has now morphed into a full-blown Gran Turismo sequel in Gran Turismo 3 A-Spec. The graphics in the game are mind-blowing. Never has any racing game on any platform ever even come close to looking as good as this game. And beyond that, it has the same amazing sim gameplay we've all given hundreds of hours of our lives to with the first two games in the series. This series is amazing, and we can't wait to get our hands on this game next year. Outside of Metal Gear Solid and Final Fantasy X, this is the real reason to own a PS2. We can't wait. If it was medically possible, we at 3.5D would gladly volunteer to be put into a medical coma for a year just to pass the time until Metal Gear Solid 2 hits. There is literally no game on the system that is more hotly anticipated than the sequel to 1998's Game of the Year. The original Metal Gear Solid is easily one of the greatest games ever made, and what few snippets of footage we've been able to get our hands on of Metal Gear Solid 2 shows us that it is on course to top the original in every conceivable way. The graphics in the game are unreal and unrivaled. Chances are, if you pick up a PS2 at launch, it's to play this game eventually. We can't wait any longer for this game to hit. Unfortunately, we still have a year to go on this game. Why is life so unfair?
Metal Gear Solid 2 is undoubtedly going to be the biggest killer app for the PlayStation 2 and the best reason to buy one unless there's some other unforeseen game that could dare come in and unseat it. That's totally never going to happen. This will be a generation defining game for the PS2. Thank you for watching 3.5D's Ultimate PlayStation 2 Launch Guide. If you managed to grab a PS2 at launch, there are so many good to solid games to choose from. But this is a system we are buying more for the games coming out in the future than the ones currently on hand. Only time will tell if the PS2 will manage to stay on top of this generation. Sega is amping up the pressure this year by releasing arguably the best lineup of games for any system this holiday season. And Nintendo's Dolphin is still on the horizon, as is the new competitor, Microsoft's super secretive Xbox project. With four contenders in the home console market, the future is uncertain as to who will ultimately come out on top. One thing is for sure in the console market, with so much competition, every contender is going to have to put out their best efforts in order to gain the top spot. Which means, in the end, it is we gamers who end up winning.